Hi everyone, um, okay, thanks for checking out this video. So in uh, today's lesson, we're gonna be talking about the um, Gillespie algorithm, which is a famous algorithm for uh, simulating um, stochastic models. And uh, this, this method was, um, it was actually invented by a lot of people and kind of like, uh, it was sort of invented over time, like piece by piece by many different people. But the guy who took the last step in inventing it and uh, publishing it was this guy named Dan Gillespie, who, um, who published it in uh, 1976. So that's why I said I named after him. And you guys may also sometimes hear it called the uh, SSA method for uh, stochastic uh, simulation algorithm. So um, yeah, sometimes it may be called the SSA method. Okay, so before we get into the actual algorithm, I'm just gonna tell you guys uh, an example system that we're gonna try to, to make a simulation of. So we'll sort of start with our, uh, our usual go-to model where we have some DNA we have a gene that we're gonna call gene X. Um, and so we have some, some uh, mRNA being transcribed from gene X. Um, this will be with, uh, it'll be transcribed with a rate K, production rate K, and it'll be degraded with a rate, um, the rate gamma X. So remember, we need to multiply the X here for the rate because uh, because the, the decay is some percentage of, uh, of the total number of mRNAs that's, that's decaying. Um, okay, so we're gonna talk about how to, um, how to make a stochastic simulation of this system. And I'm actually, um, the reason I'm only doing RNAs for now is just to make it like as simple as possible, because if we have, uh, if we have more than one gene or if we have the protein step in here or something, that'll just be too complicated to talk about for an example of this. Um, but don't worry, we'll get to that uh, in future videos. Um, but for now, we're just going to talk about this uh, this system where we have two possible events. So we have um, the production of mRNA and the uh, degradation of mRNA. And each event, each of these events has a rate. Um, okay, so before we talk about the uh, Gillespie algorithm, we're, we're going to talk about sort of like the naive way of doing this that isn't actually as good as the Gillespie algorithm. So sort of the naive way that um, many people sort of think to do it if they haven't heard of this like more clever method um, is you sort of think about just how to, how to do a stochastic simulation of the system over time. We just, we just have, uh, sorry, this is a T. So it's just for, for whatever amount of time we want to simulate, we sort of break it up into, um, into DT, so some DT sized segments. So just, uh, so we'll go from like zero to DT, whatever that is, could be like 0.2 or whatever. And then we just check, like we randomly check if either of these events occurred. So we check in this, um, in this time segment, if there was a production of mRNA. And uh, if there was a production of mRNA, then we update X to be X plus one or if there was um, a, uh, a breakdown of mRNA, and if there's a breakdown of mRNA in this time segment, we update X to be X minus one. And then we sort of just do that for each, uh, for each segment, just keep doing that until we get to whatever our end time is. And then that will just be how we get the uh, stochastic dynamics. We'll just, for, for each like segment of time, we'll just check randomly to see if either of these uh, if either of these events happened and then update accordingly. Um, okay, so that's sort of the kind of naive way that people think to do it if they haven't heard of uh, Gillespie's method. So, okay, so let's talk about a better way, a better way, a more clever way to do this. So this is kind of like the non-clever way to do it that people sometimes think to do it if they haven't heard of the uh, Gillespie method. But, um, so what Gillespie realized that was so insightful was that instead of going through like each individual time segment and randomly choosing what's going to happen in that time segment, he realized that it's actually a better way to do it is to um, randomly pick the time of the next reaction and then randomly pick which reaction that will be. Um, okay, so I know this is probably like a little bit confusing for you guys right now because it, it's sort of... Uh, yeah, probably doesn't make much sense yet, but I'm gonna now walk you guys through like step-by-step step how to actually do this algorithm. And hopefully when we take it like step-by-step, step, it'll sort of, uh, it'll seem a little bit simpler and kind of make sense more intuitively. Um, okay, so the first step is to just, is to just 
sort of list all of our uh, list all of our weights in an array, so we can sort of just have them organized and keep track of them. So we're just going to call this array R, and then so we have our rate uh, K, which is the production rate, and then the uh, degradation rate is gamma times X. Sorry for my bad hand running, but uh, but yeah, gamma times X, and then K. Those are our rates. And then so what we need to do, um, the first thing we're going to randomly choose is the uh, next time point of the next reaction that's going to occur. So if we're at um, if we're at time t, this could be zero or it could be any time in the middle of the algorithm or whatever, we're, we're at time t, we're going to say that the next time point is going to be time t plus uh, tau. And so the challenge is to uh, randomly pick tau in a way that, um, sorry for the bad hand running here, but, but to randomly pick tau in a way that's random but makes sense. So how do we do this? How do we choose the next time point in a way that's random but uh, makes sense and, and uh, will give us the correct um, trajectory? So the way we do this is by taking a random draw from a uh, exponential distribution. So if you guys forget what an exponential distribution looks like, it looks like this. So we're just uh, decaying but never actually reaching zero. Um, and then, so, uh, the PDF for next exponential distribution is like, uh, lambda times E to the negative lambda, um, X. Um, you guys don't need to memorize this for this video, but this may actually be a good thing to memorize. Like if you're going to be doing a lot of this type of, a lot of this type of, uh, stuff in the future, it may actually be good to memorize this, um, if you have time. And then, so the mean, uh, the mean of this is one over lambda. So, okay, so how do we choose this lambda parameter here um, for this, uh, for our simulation? How do we choose this lambda parameter here? Well, lambda here is actually just going to be, uh, is actually going to be the sum of all of the rates. So whatever, um, and by the way, remember that this rate, uh, gamma times X, this actually depends on whatever, um, whatever the current level of X is at time T. Cause remember X is changing. X is getting produced and, uh, and breaking down. So X is actually changing. So this is actually, this rate itself is actually dynamic. So, um, so the rate, yeah, this rate at time T can be, can be different at different time T's. Um, but anyway, so yeah, at time t, the way we choose uh, the lambda parameter for this uh, for this exponential distribution is to take the sum of all of the rates. Um, and uh, if you guys are interested, I may do I may do actually um, a more advanced video in the future, sort of talking about like the, the technical analysis of like why we're doing this and why we're using a uh, exponential distribution between event times and sort of why all this, uh, like giving like the proofs for all this. Uh, but for now, I'm sort of just telling you guys like sort of a basic lesson for just, uh, how to, how to start with the, with this algorithm and start, um, and start coding it and using it. But in the future, if you guys are interested, like leave a comment and I may, I'm, if people are like, if, if people like want to hear this, I may, um, make a more advanced video, um, explaining like why we're doing all this stuff. But for now, all you need to know is just to choose, to choose, uh, the next time point, which will be T plus tau. Um, we're drawing tau from an exponential, uh, random distribution, um, with the parameter where, where the Lambda parameter is, uh, is the sum of all of the rates at time t. Um, okay. So, okay, so then after we know the uh, time when the next event will occur, we need to choose which event that will be. So we know it's going to either be a uh, production of mRNA or a uh, breakdown of mRNA. And we know the rates for these. Um, and actually, yeah, remember again, just the rate for the, uh, breakdown actually depends on the current level of X. So if we have zero of X, then we know that this rate will be zero. So we, we then know that 
if we have zero of x, the only event that can happen is uh, the production. But let's say we have a couple of x, and we have this is some uh, some positive number here for this rate. So how do we choose which of these uh, which of these events will be happening? So what we're going to do is just take a random draw between the two of them, but we're going to weight the probabilities accordingly. So we're going to say the probability of uh, x going to um, x plus one. Uh, the probability of this happening is going to be um, k over um, the sum of all of the rates. And then likewise, uh, the probability of, um, of a, a breakdown of mRNA happening, which means x going to x uh, minus 1, the probability of this happening will be um, gamma x over the sum of all the rates. Um, and so we just take a we, we just take a random draw with these probabilities. So basically we're weighting each of these events. Um, we're, we're just weighting them accordingly uh, based on which one has uh, has the higher rate. Um, yeah, okay, so, so I mean, I know this is a little bit like more complicated than the deterministic stuff we've been doing, but this is, if you sort of wrap your head around this, um, it actually is like a pretty simple algorithm considering how powerful it is. Um, so it's really, there's really only two things we have to do. So just for each, for each, uh, yeah, it's like for each time point, let's say we're at time T, all we have to do is choose the time point of the next reaction, um, meaning the next event, the next, uh, the next one of these, when it'll be happening whether x will go to x plus one or x minus one. So we just cho choose the time of the next event. And then the second part is to just choose which event that will be. And then we just keep doing that, just uh, at each time point, choose the next time point, and then update um, update the, the number of x. And then just keep doing that uh, until we get to whatever we determine will be our end of our simulation. And so one thing to notice and to just kind of watch out for um, is that when you have your results, the time points actually won't be evenly spaced because remember, we're, we're, we're randomly choosing them. So we're not going to, this is actually like one potential um, disadvantage, although in a future lesson, we may talk about how to, um, how to make the, the time points uh, uniformly spaced again in an efficient way. Um, but so like the raw output though, you actually do get... Uh, like random jumps between time points because we're randomly choosing the time of the next reaction. So that's just something to be mindful of, um, to just, uh, yeah, just be mindful of that, that you won't get uh, uniformly spaced time points. But yeah, so at each, at each time point that we're randomly choosing, we just um, choose which event will happen and then update the uh, value of X accordingly. It'll either be uh, X going to X plus one or X going to X minus one. And then, um, so yeah, when, when we actually run this, we should get like a trajectory of X that's sort of, uh, yeah, it should look something like that, like a stochastic trajectory where it, um, it's, it gets produced and then eventually reaches, uh, its steady state. Uh, which remember the, the steady state for this will be, uh, will be K over, um, gamma. So if any of you guys are um, confused about this right now, don't worry because uh, I realize this is um, this is a little bit confusing. And uh, when I when I learned it for the first time, I definitely had to spend some time like wrapping my brain around it. Uh, but in the next video, we're going to be actually writing the code and running the simulation of this. So I think that'll hopefully help it make more sense because um, when I when I sort of draw it out like this. It is a little bit confusing, but when we actually get to like write the code and you see line by line what's happening and we actually see the results of the simulation, I think hopefully that will help it to make more sense. And then also, um, if any of you guys want a more technical explanation, like a like deeper into kind of the math of this, I'm going to put a link in the description um, to a lecture by an MIT professor where he taught, he taught about this uh, algorithm in one of his classes. So if any of you guys want just like a, a deeper more technical explanation. I'll put a link to that video, which I think is a pretty good video. Okay. So, uh, so thanks for watching. Uh, see you next time.